Kuzangpala, you're watching a special series on Let's Talk Reading. And uh, in today's episode, we have uh, two writers questioning each other. And today with me, I have uh, Pema Yudin, who published her first book when she was 12 years old, Coming Home. And uh, recently, she published her second book, Lomba. Hello, um, this is Cheku who published his uh, first book last year in 2015, Chasing Dreams, and he is currently working as a radio anchor with PBS. Okay, uh, Pema Yudin, uh, you published your first book, uh, Coming Home, when you, are, when you were 12 years old. So uh, ca can, you, uh, I mean, uh, can you tell me how you got into this writing? Um, I think it was with uh, reading when I was uh, around four or five I used to read and I've, I've had become a very avid reader by the age of 12 and I wanted to write as well and it began with uh, short stories, essays and then uh, I had the story of an idea I discussed it with my sister and with her help uh, I wrote a book and um, I know that you worked in Thailand as a teacher and you published your book last year. So how did it uh, come about? Um, actually, uh, I, uh, I write a lot of stuff, uh, but I should say, I should admit that uh, the stuff I write uh, are not really great. Um, I write a lot of uh, poems and uh, actually I also, I was actually once uh, into uh, writing script also, but uh, it didn't uh, go well. And I also write uh, a lot of blog. I do blogging. Actually, uh, writing is my passion. I write a lot of uh, stuff. Uh, and uh, this book, uh, Chasing Dream, is my second attempt uh, because uh, my first attempt uh, to write a book when I was a third year student in Sharps College. Uh, uh, failed because I uh, approached to some publishers and they were not really ready to uh, publish my book so I, I gave up thinking that it wouldn't be any success. So after uh, graduation from Sherbs College in 2012 uh, I got a chance to go to Thailand as English teacher. So. Um, my two years experience, I, I think my two years experience in Thailand has uh, somehow uh, got me you know, into this writing because I actually thought, uh, actually I was updating my blog um, when suddenly I remembered uh, in the book by Doji Wang Chuk, A Home of Shore. So I thought uh, I would uh, give a try to write a book, uh, pre uh, to be precise, uh, a travel log. So, uh, since then, I started, uh, you know, compiling the chapters after chapters, and uh, finally, uh, I thought uh, I would, you know, publish it. So, this is how I got my publishing. So, um, you started actually writing book since you were very young. Uh, I should twelve years is very young age to write a book. Uh, can Can you tell us something about your first book coming home? So, um, this is my first book coming home. And it's about a 14-year-old girl who's uh, struggling to find herself. And it's something that most of us go through as teenagers, you know, not knowing who our friends are and trying to find who identify what uh, ourselves. And um, so this is about that. And in the end, it's about uh, finding who she really is, who her true friends are, and coming home to what she actually is. So this might be really inspiring our young readers to be what they are. I hope so. So um, what was the inspiration behind uh, your writing or your, in particular, uh, this book? Actually, uh, when I talk about inspiration, uh, as I, uh, I said earlier, I, actually to be frank, I don't really read uh, a lot of books. Uh, I uh, read uh, uh, histories, I read blogs, and uh, I read stories, but uh, I am not really an uh, avid reader. I, I don't really uh, read a lot of books. But um, when I talk about inspiration, uh, 
like I said before, uh, Do Juan Shuk, uh, I should say he, his, his book really inspired me to write this book, uh, Chasing Dreams. Uh, because uh, when, when I was in Thailand, uh, I thought like, uh, why, why not put my, put my emotions into books? Why not people read about what I thought and what I did in my two years stay in Thailand? So uh, this, I should say, is uh, really my inspiration. So it was based on your life in Thailand? Is it like a two-story? Um, yes, I should, I should admit that uh, it's uh, inspired by two incidents. Um, but but uh, 90, 90, I, th I should say 98% of the book is my uh, true life incident, but uh, the last, uh, I mean 2% or the last remaining part, uh, which I actually see the climax and the, 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 the tony part of the book, uh, is uh, some added flavor. So I had to create some stories like what, what the writers do, uh, because uh, as, uh, as a writer I should, I should uh, make people read my book, I should, uh, you know, uh, somehow, from my stories, tell my people that uh, this book is best for them. So at, at the end, uh, I had to uh, develop a twist, a uh, twist of the story. So mm -hmm. this is kind of uh, my imaginations and um, kind of my own creation. You're now 19. And uh, you came up with your second book, Lomba. So I wanted to, I wanted to know what what Lomba is all about, what the story tells about. It's actually the New Year celebrated by people of Ha and Paru. So um, there's this myth that we have that if we don't eat dinner on Lomba night, then children are supposedly carried away to a strange land by strange creatures. So. Um, my book is based on that myth. Like uh, the girl, she, uh, she is, uh, the first part of the book is actually uh, moving from Timpu to Ha, uh, change of you know city life to a town uh, village life, and uh, it's a transition. And as the story goes on, it's about um, how she goes to another realm uh, of uh, these strange creatures, which I. Um, created by myself so um, and it's about her finding herself it's about friendship betrayal um, and everyday life when you said like uh, when you know when people don't eat uh, dinner mm -hmm. at the night of Lomba you said like they're carried away by you know, the, the, the creatures so did you really mean uh, they're literally being carried away by the creatures yes. or in, in their imaginations? <laughs> no, it's literally carried away. Okay. Uh, and <laughs> you'd have to read the book to find out more. Did you come across any person you know, who is being carried away <laughs> by those no, creatures? No, I tried to look for them, but I couldn't find any. So it's uh, purely based on my imagination and stories that my grandmother would tell me. I know you said that you don't read a lot of books, but um, if you had to choose, what would be your favorite book or your favorite writer? Uh, actually, I don't have a, a favorite book or a favorite writer as such, but I, I read uh, uh, more of uh, Daniel Steele's book. Uh, they, they, they are good, uh, inspiring. Now you have uh, authored you know, two books, especially for, for you're coming home. I, I think it uh, is meant for the children, and uh, you basically write for youth. So, what what uh, really you know took you into writing this uh, children book? Mm, it's actually for uh, teenagers usually, uh, because it's based on teenagers' life, and it's kind of because I can relate. I know what they're going through. And as a teenager myself growing up, I wanted to read books that I could personally relate to because I read books about, you know, American teenager life, but I couldn't relate to that. And there aren't many books that uh, Bhutanese uh, teenagers could, can relate to. So I wanted to write it so they can understand, like, how is it to be in a Bhutanese school 
and all that that's why and it's not I think it can be read for all ages the language isn't that hard and uh, even adults can read it what do you think are the challenges that a writer faces in the country? Uh, I don't know about other writers, uh, but uh, when, when I see these, I think I'm speaking on behalf of all the writers in Bhutan. As, as a writer, uh, I think uh, the, market, the market is one thing, because if you are really getting yourself into writing a book or uh, making it a business, we have to be honest and we have to admit that the market is very small for business mm -hmm. writers because um, as I said earlier uh, people in Bhutan especially the youth they're interested you know more interested into the easiest way of getting information and getting them so entertained like uh, the latest uh, technologies uh, and the social media of course that's there and uh, yeah, if you um, if you really want to make your book a business you have uh, either you have to be uh, a famous writer a published writer or either you have to be your, your book should have the great story so that uh, it will be able to fetch all the readers you know reading your book mm -hmm. otherwise uh, uh, writing a book and uh, making it a business is not really an easy uh, task easy job mm -hmm. uh, considering um, and the readership in Bhutan because uh, I think uh, in, in Bhutan we have a very bad readership because uh, literally we have to we, we really have to impose people on, on reading like um, last year 2015 we the nation uh, celebrated the reading year to commemorate the birth anniversary of His Majesty the Fort Rukalpo so uh, somehow we can make out from that a lot and a lot of books were read by people. So actually, the each each uh, you know a person reading a book, they were maintaining kind of the numbers mm -hmm. of books they were reading actually. But uh, now we can find out that uh, as soon as the reading year was over, it was something like people stopped reading. So that's why I I can say that uh, to to be a writer. We have a lot of challenges, especially to find the readers, and uh, especially, you know, if they think and if they see uh, the Bhutanese book, I mean, the, the books written by Bhutanese authors, they don't really uh, take up those books mm -hmm. because uh, they think, uh, because they are already used to with reading other books, you know, written by the, the, the great writers internationally. When we are talking about writing a book, we have to really think about the publishing. And uh, I wanted to ask you, how how um, how do you find you know how do you find publishing a book, especially in Bhutan? Since it was uh, self-financed, I think it's easier. Uh, I printed my second book at Quinsel and. Um, and I had already published my first book, so it was uh, easier. And in Bhutan, I think it's uh, publishing a book isn't that hard as compared to other countries because I know that uh, books like Harry Potter, which is a global phenomenon now, was rejected several times. But here we can uh, directly uh, print whatever we want to. And I think people should take advantage of that. How long did it take for you to complete this book? Tracing Dreams actually is, uh, is a book about uh, finding happiness, finding contentment. And um, actually, I, I don't know about other authors, uh, other writers, but for me, uh, it, it took me a long time to, to, to complete this book. Because uh, when I, I wrote this book when I was in Thailand, and um, as, as a teacher, I literally had a busy schedule you know, with teaching with students, preparing lesson, lesson plans. And I had to actually uh, spend sleepless night you know, going over and over again, over and over again, consulting um, my friends who are uh, avid readers, who, who really write well. So, um, 
I should say I. It took me almost two years to complete this book. Um, I understand because uh, it took me around three years to complete my second book. With um, college and just life, it gets hard to you know sit down and write. So, um, talking about that, do you ever um, get writer's block, right, uh, where you can't think of anything to write, even though you have the time, and how do you overcome it? Yes, you yeah, really, really. I think uh, this is uh, the greatest challenge of every writer. You know, the writer's block. Um, you you th you think of uh, something, and uh, when you're literally writing down or scribbling down, you know, you get to nowhere. You're your block. You don't get any words. You, you don't get any sentence to write. No continuation of the work. So um, I had a lot of uh, incidences where I had th this kind of problems. But um, what I do is uh, one thing I I do for myself when I have the writer's block is um, I real I, I get away from writing and uh, I think a lot about you know the the topic or the whatever chapter I am writing in. Um, I mean, casually, I, mm -hmm. I think about it casually, and suddenly if something struck me, suddenly if, uh, if something gets into my mind, I, you know, quickly jot it down, and, uh, you know, we, as, as a writer, we have a lot of time to rephrase it. And the second thing I do is uh, I consult my friends uh, how to go about what the ideas, what ideas could be better. So, yes, these are some of the solutions mm -hmm. I adopt. Another good way is what I do is I find out which time I work best at. So I found out that I work better at night, whether it's studying or writing. So I tend to work at night. Okay, you, uh, you began writing, you know, since young, 12 years. And uh, what, what really, you know, took you into writing at this very young age? Um, it was probably uh, reading, because uh, when I was younger, my grandmother used to take me to the library. We used to live right next to the library. So um, at a very young age, I started reading, and um, that's it. I wanted to write uh, because I read. I wanted to be a writer. And that's what got me into writing. Okay, the, does reading, uh, you know, does reading really inspire you <laughs> to become a writer? For I don't know for other people, but for me, yes, because when I read, uh, it's I'm taken into another world. Like my favorite book would be the Harry Potter series, and it's like a world created out of pure imagination. And I would like to do that too. I want some people to read my book and go into another world and forget their problems even for like an hour. Okay, but I know uh, we have, as a writer, we have a lot of uh, challenges to publish a book of your own. So what, what do you think are the challenges to, to publish the book in Bhutan? Um, in Bhutan, I think uh, the main challenge would be, as you said, the market because uh, the population is very less and half of the population don't read. So it's very hard to um, earn a living out of being a writer. And maybe that's why most people don't opt to become a writer. And other than that, I think uh, Bhutan has many advantages of becoming a writer. It's very easy, it's fairly easy to publish a book uh, talking about that, would you ever consider becoming a full-time, a professional writer? Um, honestly, I should say that um, being becoming a professional writer or adopting writing as your career is not uh, really an option in Bhutan. Uh, as I said, considering the small market and the poor readership in uh, the Bhutanese people. As you said, uh, the, the challenges are really big as uh, a young writers and it's, it's very difficult to, to attract the readers to read your book. It's very difficult to sell mm. your books in the market. So um, I, don't, I don't think uh, 
adopting this writing as profession is a really good idea, unless you are a well-known writer, unless you are a well-established I mean, established writer in Bhutan. Because uh, if you are already well-known among the youth, among the children, among, among the people, uh, no doubt your, your, book, your books will be sold in, in any time. Because you're already known by people and uh, people who read your previous book uh, will be you know, eagerly waiting to, to read your next book. What might have uh, been written there? What might have been the new story? What might have been, uh, what, what is the new ideas in the book? So I, I think um, if you keep on writing, if you uh, really keep yourself with the uh, writing thing. I, I, I think that um, as you become uh, established writer, as you become famous, um, I think there are chances or there are opportunities for you to uh, maintain your I mean, status as uh, the writer. But uh, honestly, you know, considering the uh, market and the challenges for the young writers, uh, I, I don't think writing can be taken as a full-time profession or a job. Because uh, uh, talking about the challenges, um, I wanted to mention, I want to talk about the uh, BIGMA registration procedures that mm -hmm. uh, we recently had. And as far as I am a uh, consumer, I know, um, if you are publishing if you're owning your own publishing certificate or the license, uh, you have to pay uh, an ultimate one thousand. You have to pay one thousand five hundred to the Bigma for the registration of your book. And if you are going through another uh, publisher, so five hundred Notrum. So I think, um, as a Buddhist writer, as uh, to to uh, to promote the young writers, to inspire them to write and to inspire people to read the books written by their own people. I think um, if, if Big Ma, you know, if Big Ma really don't charge us this, 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 uh, this uh, charge or tax or whatever it is, I think uh, this would really be helpful, this would really benefit the young writers because uh, if uh, another challenge is the finance, yes. if you're really financing your book yourself, uh, if you are, if you have uh, the money, there shouldn't be any problem of uh, writing book, or you should, you, you don't have any worries mm -hmm. of not getting your book sold in the market. Uh, after all, you you have the money, or uh, you're writing uh, out of your passion, or uh, out of your interest, or out of your liking and writing. Uh, since um, the finance is uh, one problem, I think 1,500 and 500 should be uh, a big figure mm -hmm. for the people who don't have the finance. So um, I think uh, this would really inspire the young writers to write more books and publish their books if this uh, minimal fee or the registration fee is being exempted. So this is what I feel. I don't know about other writers, but I don't know what they're thinking about. Yes, I agree because uh, earning, earning a good profit from a book is hard enough as it is, and having to uh, pay a tax or a registration fee would be, uh, would be a great uh, challenge to a young writer. And yes, as uh, you said, it would uh, inspire more writers if such fee could be exempted. I agree upon what you said uh, right now. Because as, as a writer, you already had uh, enough hardships mm -hmm. and hard time, you know, spending sleepless nights, yes. writing the books, getting the ideas, borrowing uh, the stories, I mean, borrowing the ideas from your friends, your, your mentors, your, your family members. You already had enough hardship and mm -hmm. hard time, you know, writing the book yes. and after it is being published, you have another challenge, you know, you have another hardship mm -hmm. to, you know, get it sold in the market. Mm -hmm. So I, th I think these are some of the challenges mm -hmm. uh, the young writers in Bhutan are facing right now. I guess and that's why many people don't opt for it, because 
uh, considering the hard work we put into one book, the profit that we get out of it is not very much. And uh, when I talk about the profit and expenditure by mm -hmm. writing a book, I uh, have to say this, uh, and I have to be honest that uh, you know you you can't literally write your own book without consulting uh, other uh, established writers or other 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 people who are very good into writing, who are very really, uh, creative. You actually have to pay. In, in Bhutan, I don't know if it is happening with all the people, mm -hmm. but uh, literally for me, you know, you have to pay for whatever help you are learning from your friends. You, you have to pay a, a big amount of money for, for, the, for editing, for the designs and all. So I think this is another challenge uh, the Buddhist writers are facing because uh, in order to get their book well, uh, uh, in, in order to get their book checked and uh, uh, edited and get to the last stage of uh, publishing they they have to i think and uh, i i'm sure that every young writers are going through a lot of expenditure mm -hmm. and what they get at the end of the day uh, at the end of uh, the the work is uh, there's nothing they get nothing mm -hmm. so i think these are some of the challenges writers face in Bhutan. we have been talking a lot about the writing, the challenges, and the inspirations. And actually, I, I wanted to know uh, what really inspires you to write a book. Um, I think for me, it would be my uh, grandmother. She used to uh, encourage uh, me to write, and um, she practically uh, raised all her children and her grandchildren single-handedly. And I think that inspires me a lot to work hard and to be able to make her proud. Okay, by the way, when you, when you write, uh, you, you must be writing other articles also, the short stories, poems. Mm -hmm. um, did, did you ever come across a situation where you are being uh, criticized for your writings? Um, yes, I think so. And actually, I uh, am very open to criticism. Even uh, after I publish my book, I ask my friends to read it, and then I ask for whatever criticism they have to let me know, because I know that I'm not a good, uh, a perfect writer. I'm not a great writer, and I would like to become the best that I can be. And that is only through uh, learning my mistakes, uh, asking others, and then becoming better. Uh, what about you? Have you faced criticism? A lot, actually. Um, because um, it, it, I think uh, for every writer it should be okay if it mm -hmm. is a constructive criticism. But uh, when uh, I was uh, attempting to write my first book, um, I got a lot of uh, destructive criticism, I should, I should be honest, uh, because um, I had, um, you know, a lot of my friends were inspiring me and were encouraging me to go about and uh, publish the book. But then, uh, you know, on the other hand, a lot of them really discouraged me to go about with the publishing, and go about with the writing. Because uh, when I was in the uh, college, I, I used to write a lot of stuff, especially the poems and the short stories. And uh, what I do is, I write the poems, I write the stories, and later uh, I would show it to my friends, but um, you know they were less interested, and uh, they were firstly they're less interested in reading the article, and secondly, they really discouraged me to, mm -hmm. I mean, go with the writing. They would really uh, discourage me to um, write the articles. So I I think uh, I don't know about others. Uh, uh, I, I hope uh, or I think uh, many of the writers or the young young writers who are writing the articles mm -hmm. and um, uh, any, 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 any stuff, I think they are getting the same uh, criticisms as me. Because I remember uh, posting an article on website you know, and what I get is and in a half day the criticisms, uh, uh, there were uh, more criticisms than the, the, the comments. Mm -hmm. 
than the, the, the good comments. Like uh, not understanding the article or not understanding the story is one thing, but uh, understanding the story and uh, really talking bad about it uh, really discourages you to write or do anything. So this really is uh, another challenge or another um, roadblock, I should say. Now that you talk about it, I actually remember someone saying uh, that my first book, Coming Home, it was, I think, on Quinzel Online, that people were saying that maybe I didn't write it and my parents wrote it and then put my name on it. And so that really, um, actually, I'd like to say that that motivated me more because I wanted to tell people, show people that I, I could write. And so that's why I uh, all these negative criticism, I try to put it uh, to motivate me more. Actually, I agree with you. Uh, I, I actually also came across few people who, who actually said, uh, like, like you, you mm -hmm. said right now. Um, but um, the, your, your second book, Lomba, it really furnished one. The, the, the word choices, the language, really good. And uh, I should say to the, 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 the business people or the youth who ever is looking forward to read this book, that uh, this, this book is really inspiring to really get yourself lost into the other world mm -hmm. and uh, forget whatever you are and be become another one for a few moments. So, and yeah, by the way, um, what do you have to say? You know, there are a lot of uh, aspiring writers mm -hmm. in Bhutan. There are a lot of youth who are coming up with their writings. And uh, I wanted to ask, uh, what would you, you know, tell tell them about writing? What would be your advice? Mm. Uh, writing is hard. Uh, we all know it. Uh, I think I have a lot of friends who are really good writers, but they don't um, they don't take the time to sit down and write because maybe they're impatient and some people give up. But I just want to tell them that um, to not give up, to continue doing whatever uh, it is you're doing and not to take uh, criticism to heart. And also, I think that uh, us, the Bhutanese youth, take uh, a lot of things for granted, like even uh, small things like free education. And right now I'm studying on scholarship and if I, uh, scholarship by the government, and if I had to, you know, worry about money or asking, calling my parents and ask them for money all the time, I wouldn't have been able to write so sure. I think that we shouldn't take these things for granted and actually take advantages of whatever opportunities we have in the country. Even though there are challenges, I think the uh, advantages and opportunities uh, overshadow them. I, I really I agree upon you. I agree with, uh, to what you said right now. Because um, we have been talking a lot about the challenges, mm -hmm. uh, the criticisms and the hardships while writing a book, and uh, it, it would be um, the same message to the, the, the writers out there, because uh, whatever hardships I went through, whatever difficult times I had while writing the book, book uh, somewhere, you know, I, you know, writing kept me going on, uh, and writing, uh, actually, writing really. Uh, gives you freedom. You can express whatever you are thinking, you can express everything, anything you are thinking, anything you come across, and uh, this is one beautiful thing about writing. And uh, we already know that we have a lot of challenges, but uh, I would say, I would uh, urge the young writers who are aspiring to write books to continue writing because uh, one day or the other, it doesn't matter uh, what challenges we have right now, one day or the other, things are going to be good, things are going to be okay and uh, bright for the young writers. Because I think uh, a government is also uh, trying their best to promote uh, the young writers. And uh, we actually have uh, the 
Sputnik Writers uh, Association. I think we have this, and uh, I think we also have the Bloggers Association, the Buddhist Bloggers Association. So um, uh, this is one thing that really inspires us, and I think this these are really inspiring our young writers. And uh, this is one thing that I should uh, I, I must say that if you're really a keen writer, if you really like writing, keep on writing because uh, this is the best friend you have, so no matter what. So I agree. And um, I don't think I was here when your book got published last year, so I didn't get a chance to read it. I read a little bit of it uh, yesterday and I really liked it, um, your descriptions and the way you uh, you know, described every feeling of the protagonist. I really enjoyed it. And um, so uh, there might be other people like me who really enjoyed it. So do you have any plans of publishing another book soon? This book, uh, The Chasing Dreams, uh, I didn't think about, uh, think of any, any business. Uh, it is uh, out of my sheer passion to write book. It is out of my uh, likings to write books. I actually wanted to write my own book. I wanted to author my own book uh, since I was in a college and uh, I was waiting for this day. Um, like, as I said earlier, uh, considering the, the, the already big challenges in the market and the readership and the hardships to, to write a book, uh, for, for now, I haven't thought of uh, uh, writing a book, but uh, maybe it, it, it might take me some years to think of it. And uh, but when I say this, um, I, I don't, I, I don't uh, mean I would completely stop writing. Uh, I, I will continue writing. I will keep on writing. It doesn't matter what challenges I have. It doesn't matter what. Uh, what uh, things obstruct me or what hardships I have, but I'll keep on writing. And uh, because, uh, as I said, writing is the, the the best I actually can, and writing uh, is the best kind of companionship I I really get. So uh, maybe uh, it'll take few years uh, for me to think of another story or another book but for now I haven't thought of uh, writing any and uh, since you have uh, become a public figure uh, an author already uh, uh, written two books uh, I am expecting your third book very soon so or are you, are you thinking of, uh, have, have you given a thought of? Um, like you said, uh, I, I keep on writing, like it's, it's like a let out for me, outlet for me. And um, I, uh, I, I might get some ideas every now and then about a book, but I don't think I would have the time to sit down and go on with it. As you know, it takes a lot of time and pressure to uh, complete a book and with college it's really difficult because I'm a mathematics student and it's completely different from writing sure. so I have to concentrate on that so maybe after uh, graduation if I have the time I'll do it now. And um, so you published this uh, last year and when I published my first book uh, right now I have a lot of regrets like I wish I could have done the smallest thing like the font differently or something so uh, do you have any sort of regrets like that do you wish you could have done anything uh, differently yes definitely because uh, after you do you know uh, after you do a thing uh, you surely have you know some some regrets you have this thinking that oh I should have done that way. Yes, actually I actually have this kind of uh, thoughts um, because um, as, as a writer I wanted to you know make my book I mean 
really unique uh, because uh, when readers think that oh this book is written by Bhutanese uh, they are less interested so um, the one thing that writers uh, should uh, keep in mind is that uh, no matter what they should give their best to make you know their book uh, no different than than the books we read you know written by other uh, great writers uh, starting from uh, the, the the designs cover the quality so uh, I think these are some of the things that I should keep in mind and uh, uh, I think this should be this these are some of the things that I should really apply if I am you know, coming up with my mm -hmm. second book. Uh, when we were talking about the financial uh, problem or the uh, obstacles in publishing book, um, but you, you said uh, like uh, if, if you have the money you don't have any problem but uh, mm -hmm. are you thinking of any other means of uh, publishing your book, you know, the sponsors, Actually, I haven't tried looking for any because I know it's hard and I'm only here for like two months and I was, I wanted to get it published uh, and I, uh, we did it ourselves and I don't know if, uh, how much money I can make it or not, but I didn't care that much because I'd already done all the work and I just wanted to get it published. As for a sponsor, um, I think it would be great if um, some people could sponsor young writers, but uh, I know it's very hard, so no, I haven't looked for any. Uh, I came across people you know, who were talking about the, the, the books written by uh, Bhutanese. So uh, they were saying like uh, the books written by Bhutanese are very expensive. And uh, they're also talking about, uh, you know, minimizing the, the, the cost uh, because, yeah, we, we, we really agree upon, we re agree this uh, because um, the books we are reading, uh, the books written by the other authors and written by Bhutanese are completely, ha have completely different uh, cost and uh, because uh, Publishing a book in Bhutan is really expensive, I should say, yeah. and uh, I don't know what others are thinking, but uh, this is my own thinking that publishing a book in Bhutan is very expensive because we have to import everything from, uh, you know, from from other other. I mean, especially from India, we have to import everything, so that's why uh, it it. Uh, has to be expensive uh, considering the materials that we get from you know other 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 countries so um, as you as you said earlier uh, talking about the sponsors uh, I think it would again uh, inspire our young writers to write more keep on writing and uh, uh, inspiring inspiring the the, the, the Buddhists to write I mean read the books written by their own people if uh, the concerned agencies or if the concerned uh, people, the, the concerned people would uh, really help or uh, be helpful in sponsoring. I agree. Expenditure. And um, actually, uh, I, your book is 250 milligrams, right? And mine is 295. And I think nowadays that's uh, not that expensive because that's pretty much how much uh, a meal would cost. And you know that meal is just for an hour maybe, but the book mm -hmm. can last you a lifetime. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I think um, we should buy Bhutanese books and um, encourage write Bhutanese writers and uh, the book, um, some proceeds of my book also goes to uh, Tariana Foundation, so that's how I wanted people to um, encourage people to buy the books, not only to encourage me, but to help uh, others as well. 
Yes, uh, it was very nice chatting with you and getting the perspective of another Bhutanese writer. And um, the little part that I did read of your book was very good and I'll complete it hopefully. And I, I will be looking forward to more of your work. Well, um, I would like to thank you so much for sharing a lot about your book. And uh, I, th I think uh, and I hope that uh, your book will hit the market mm -hmm. very soon. And I think the readers are, uh, I, I think the readers will come forward to read your books because uh, uh, I have uh, read the synopsis and uh, or, uh, read some chapters and I think it's really inspiring, really interesting. And uh, I would urge our readers and our, our, our people to, to, to buy this book and uh, read the book because this is how we promote our young writers and our, our people writing our book. And uh, uh, not, not the least, uh, um, before I want to, I would like to thank uh, those people who helped me in writing this book, especially uh, Drupa, my friend, who helped me in editing and, uh, you know, the layout of the book. And, um, and also the cover design is also done by Drupa, so I would like to thank Drupa a lot for uh, making me uh, able to to come up with this book and uh, also string my my brother who helped me in publishing this book so 